goals of gaining strength and influencing decision makers, helping gather petitions to Governor Cuomo, hosting a gas land screening in your neighborhood, calling and meeting with your state senator and assembly member to get them to co-sponsor the ban bills. The work that's necessary to build the power we need to defeat the oil and gas industry and ban fracking in New York. But we're going to have fun while we're doing it too, right? Because organizing a movement is about creating community, the enduring connections and ties that are the true source of joy in this world. One final note before we really begin. Please silence your cell phones. Thank you. And now it's my honor to introduce the Reverend Thomas Miller, Canon for Liturgy and the Arts, Cathedral of St. John the Divine, who will welcome us to this glorious cathedral. Welcome to all of you this afternoon. It is fantastic to see so many of you here. I welcome you on behalf of the Dean of the Cathedral and the Chapter and all of us uh, in this cathedral community who care greatly about this issue. For 120 years, the cathedral has been here inviting people in to gatherings around the important issues of the day and many of those issues which are ongoing and are still certainly not resolved after 120 years, from immigration to refugees, poverty, anti-war, civil rights, apartheid, gender and sexuality issues, and now the issue of the day uh, at this critical point in our national history and the history of energy and how we're going to go forward. And it's so important to have your voice heard and to be heard in this great place. I'm so thrilled that there's so many of you here today. Welcome to the cathedral and enjoy this afternoon and be energized for the work that's ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is one of our top allies in Albany. We need more like him. Senator Tony Abella, sponsor of Senate Bill 4220A, legislation to ban fracking in New York. I have to tell you that this is really inspirational to see so many people here today on this issue. You know, when we started the Industrial Revolution in this country, people didn't know the effects it would have on the environment. But I thought we learned from that experience because we poisoned the ground, we poisoned the air, we poisoned the water. And it's taken decades and billions of dollars to improve our environment, not only here in New York State, but throughout the country. Well, apparently there are some people who haven't learned that lesson because here we are on the verge of allowing the most dangerous environmental practice in New York State in a hundred years. When people say, the proponents of hydrofracking, we want hydrofracking, what do we respond back? No fracking way. I want to hear that from you. No. Fracking way. You can be louder. This is our opportunity and our battle to say to the oil and natural gas companies, we're not going to allow you to destroy our water. We're not going to allow you to destroy our environment. And unfortunately, there are politicians in Albany who believe hydrofracking is the cure-all to the economy. Those same people, if you talk to them up in Albany, refuse to believe there's a problem with global warming. These people have a different sense of reality. We have to let them know we're not going to allow this in our state. You have to do that. The way we're going to win this battle is a real grassroots effort. Talking to my colleagues in Albany, whether they be the Republican state senators or some of the Democratic assembly members in the assembly, we can win if you get involved. Now, obviously, your presence here today is very important, but you have to leave here with a mission. 
to call every Republican state senator in Albany, because that's where the battle is really now. You have to leave here and call the governor's office, because that's where the battle is. The oil and natural gas companies have been donating huge amounts of money to our state elected officials for the, for the past 10 years. You have to show those politicians, I don't care how much money you got, I'm gonna go and vote against any politician who approves or supports hydrofracking in this state. And let's not forget, let's not forget that the rumor is Governor Cuomo wants to run for president. Well, let's remind him that if he allows hydrofracking in this state, and that first accident that happens, and you all know it'll be quick and our water supply will be contaminated, that his chances of becoming president are done. That's a message he has to hear. I am very proud of the fact that before I introduced the ban legislation in Albany, all the talk was about regulation. Once we introduced the ban legislation, all of a sudden now, everybody's realizing, hey, wait a second, we don't want regulations. We never asked for this process. We never asked for hydrofracking. We don't want it. We're not going to accept it. And we're going to fight this battle no matter where it goes, no matter where it takes. Let's say, once and for all, no fracking way. No fracking way. No fracking way. Our next speaker is a veteran of this movement, someone we've looked to time and a time again for leadership, and he's always delivered. If you've seen Gasland, you've seen him. Manhattan Borough President Scott Stringer. Th thank you very much, and uh, thank you for referencing my uh, acting career. Josh Fox is here, and I want to say thank you. Um, I'm very proud to be here today in this packed house to talk about the environment of this state, the environment of this city, and quite frankly, our environment in the United States. This issue is now today the number one issue that we face in terms of preserving our Earth for the next generation on this planet and hydrofracking will take us back to a dark ages when oil and gas companies thought that they could set the tone and the standard for what's possible in this country. We are the ones who must set the environmental agenda. A couple of years ago, when this movement was just really getting started and we were starting to create some real hope and possibility, we decided in my office to take a look at what was happening around the country with all these so-called hydrofracking accidents. And what we found was very disturbing. We found streams being blown up. We found faucets and houses going up. We started to ask questions and we said, what is actually going on? Why are companies like Halliburton extracting gas at great damage to our environment and our communities? And we were told that some of the science that they were using, well, they couldn't tell us exactly what they were doing to our earth because they said, look, it's like the Big Mac special sauce. We can't tell people what's going on. And for a while, our federal government said, well, that made a lot of sense. But it took activists and environmentalists from around the country to step up and say, we're not going to let them do this. We're not going to let them get away with this. We're going to work in state houses across the country. We're going to work around Washington, D.C. We're going to build an environmental movement the likes we've never seen. And today in New York State, this is where we draw the line in the sand. It is not safe to use hydrofracking. It is not right to use hydrofracking. We should not give away our earth 
to people who are just speculators and are playing the market with our lives. This is our movement today. Now, I am glad, and through our Kill the Drill campaign and all the organizations, I am glad to be working with outstanding lawmakers who believe, as you do, that we can end this practice. I am proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with Tony Avella and Adriano Espiat and Linda Rosenthal, but we need to make this the litmus test. You cannot represent people in this city and people in this state unless you tell us as a legislator and as an elected official where do you stand when it comes to protecting our environment. That's what you have to do. That's the takeaway today. Where do you stand? How are you going to help? How are you going to educate? That is the issue that we face today. So I wanted to come by to say thank you because this is not a movement that started at the very top and trickled down. The people in this city and this state built this hydro for anti-fracking movement. People look to this movement to help us save what I think is a very part of our soul and also a very part of our lives. Could you imagine fracking near the watershed? Could you imagine the economic disaster that would be for New York City? if we had to build water filtration plants? And could you imagine what it would be like in this state if this beautiful, beautiful state was suddenly polluted because of a science that nobody quite understands what it does? And what we've seen it do is so devastating that we have to say this is not right. This is what's at stake here today. And I urge all of you to stay organized to stay focused, to become political, to hold elected officials to the highest environmental standard. If you do that, we will be able to ensure environmental safety in this state and in this country for decades to come. This is our time to build this movement. We stand ready to march, to fight, to legislate, and to work together because that's how we're going to win this. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to introduce one of our top allies in the Assembly. Linda Rosenthal is a co-sponsor of Assembly Bill 7218A, legislation to ban fracking in New York. But more than that, she's a leader, willing to speak up and speak out against the danger of fracking. We need to recruit many more like her. Assemblywoman Linda Rosenthal. Thank you so much for that wonderful welcome and thank you for all of your tremendous work on this important issue. Um, I'm Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal. I repre represent the Upper West Side and parts of Clinton uh, in the New York State Assembly. In a few days it will be six years and I am so happy that I am there at a moment in time when it is necessary to galvanize all of the progressive fair-minded people in this state to come together to ban fracking. At an anti-fracking rally in Albany a couple of weeks ago, I compared the activists working against fracking to an earthquake, much like the ones that are, that are being caused around the country because of fracking. And I feel the same here. I feel the same energy and the same determination to Ban fracking in New York State. All of you. All of you have been like an earthquake. Together, you submitted more than 70,000 comments to the DEC on the draft ge supplemental generic environmental impact statement. All of you in this room have sent shock waves through Albany and across the state and indeed across the nation with your dogged opposition to fracking. You are the reason that we have so many victory, victories to celebrate thus far. Thank you for your continued and strong support that I and the other legislators in Albany need. We need you behind us to continue doing our work 
to advance an agenda that does not include fracking as we try to get cleaner energy in this state. It would be that much more difficult to have such a strong movement in the legislature were it not for all of you. This is one of the most important issues we face as a state, and the stakes are so incredibly high, but I don't have to tell you that. The victories that we have won so far are those of the grassroots, and we should take a moment to celebrate you, because things need to be done, but you all have gotten us this far, so give yourselves a round of applause, and all of your organizers. Now, one of the victories we've had thus far is that the proposed executive budget does not include any funding for fracking. Yeah. Because who needs staff if there's nothing to regulate or watch, right? It's also a victory just a couple of days ago that the court in Cortland ruled that local governments could use zoning law to ban fracking in their backyards. But that is not enough. Only a statewide ban on fracking can protect our precious drinking water, the public health, and the environment from the many dangers that have been documented when fracking comes to your town. Let's make something crystal clear. We need a statewide ban on fracking, and we need it now. This is a people's movement, fighting for the people's right to safe drinking water, safe air, safe soil, a safe future. Indeed, a future at all. So, I am so proud to be working with all of you. I commit to you that I will continue my strong advocacy and I will speak out wherever there's a chance. And I know you'll be there too because of your great commitment. So together, we will be able to ban fracking in New York State. Thank you very much. I'm happy to join the chair of the Environmental Committee where I sit on, the Ranker member, hopefully the future chair, Tony Avella. And all I think is terrific that our courts are pushing back. You know, the court process is long, it can be overturned. What we need is a clear statewide plan that says we will not allow fracking, we will not endanger our drinking water, we know how fresh it is, not just for us, for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you for being here. Thank you for standing up for yourself and for your neighbors. And thank you for standing up for yourself. Thank you, Assemblyman Kellner. Now, before we introduce the next speaker, one thing I want to note is that this past Tuesday evening, Food and Water Watch co-sponsored a very successful screening of Gasland with Assemblyman Kellner. That's the kind of leadership we need from all our legislators. We need to be calling our legislators and asking them not just to see Gasland, but to host their own screenings in their own districts, in their own communities, right? All right. I'd now like to introduce one of our staunch allies on the City Council, the New York City Council, Councilwoman Gail Brewer. Thank you very much. Just like my colleagues, I was one of the people who went to that wonderful hearing at Borough Manhattan Community College and testified against fracking in the state of New York. And we just had a hearing, thanks to Councilmember Gennaro, Environmental Protection Committee in the City of New York. I know that the Department of Environmental Protection does care about our water, but we need seven miles around, not two miles around, any fracking. And what that really means is the City of New York should say no fracking, just like everyone here today. In the city level, what we have to worry about is the water. We don't have the same uh, legislative mandate that our wonderful state legislators do. So I'm just here to say to be supportive of you, to thank you, and to say if all anybody in New York has to do is to talk to the families where there is fracking, that makes it clear, no fracking in the state of New York. We will work with you. Thank you.
Folks, my son Zach here. Um, one of our staunchest allies here in New York and across the country has been Democracy for America. One of an all too tiny handful of national organizations supporting a ban on fracking. As for Jim Dean, I know it sounds like a cliche, but if you looked up the term rabble rouser in the dictionary, you'd see his picture. Folks, Jim Dean. Good afternoon. I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, you know, Democracy for America has been very proud to have been in this fight, uh, both in Pennsylvania uh, and in New York. Uh, we're certainly very proud to have been able to work with these fine people over here, as well as Josh Fox, and uh, getting the word on Gasland out. But this isn't going to happen because of Democracy for America. It's happening because of you and because of all of us. And as my brother Howard used to say, you have the power. And that's exactly where this thing is going to go, and that is where this debate is going to go. And as long as we are in it together, we're going to win it. Now, there's something else I just want to kind of bring up here, because uh, Howard and I grew up in a Republican family. But if there's one thing that our father, our Republican father, told us, is that you cannot do good business with bad people. To wit, we are talking about an industry that has a long history of over 100 years of litigating against tax payments to governments that give them resources to drill with. We are talking about an industry that has a long history of litigating against paying royalties. We are talking about an industry that right now is giving landowners in upstate New York and across Pennsylvania disadvantageous and one-sided lease agreements that are very, very difficult to understand and ripping them off. We are talking about an industry that is part of a marketplace right now, 60% of the money in, that is in the pricing that is being driven by speculation, and we are talking about an industry that walks away from its obligations to its communities when things go wrong, and we are talking about an industry that is trying to take away the home rule of towns and cities in Pennsylvania. Folks, the business of creating jobs is a lie, and you don't have to take my word for it, you can just go to Goldboro, Nova Scotia, right now, where they, for about 18 months, employed about a thousand people, drilling a bunch of gas wells and putting in a bunch of pipelines, and now there's six people there working. And those six people are not from Nova Scotia, they're from Houston, Texas, Aberdeen, Scotland, and other places across the world, but they're not creating employment in the town of Nova Scotia any more than they're going to create any employment in New York State or tax revenue in New York State or any of the benefits that they are supposedly talking about right now. You cannot do good business with bad people. And to those who continue this lie of job creation, uh, taxpayer uh, money or money for the state, we need to call them out on this right now. But most importantly, as Scott and Tony and others have said, we must be in front of our legislators and we must be in front of Governor Cuomo right now because they will not know unless we all tell them. So please, when we come out of here, think about what you're going to do next. Think about who you're going to call next and think about which elected official you're going to go lobby next to make sure that they understand that we have to ban fracking in New York State and set an example for the rest of the country that governments are not going to be bamboozled by big business. Thank you so much. Thank you. Folks, it wouldn't be a rally without some chanting, would it? Ban fracking now! Ban fracking now! Ban fracking now! The Working Families Party is a progressive powerhouse here in New York and has been in the forefront of organizations calling for a ban on fracking. It's my tremendous honor to introduce Dan Cantor, Executive Director of the Working Families Party. Our original slogan was we want a fair economy and a real democracy. And we were born fighting for living wage jobs, affordable housing, health care, quality public schools, public financing of elections. But what am I doing here? We're here because the fight for economic justice and environmental sanity are inextricably linked. And I think everybody in this room knows this. 
What good is a minimum wage job, even a higher minimum wage job, if you cannot drink the water? What good is health care if you cannot drink the water? What we're running up against here is what we run up against all the time. The power of large corporations that care more about quick profits than anything else. It's the same story with low-wage retail giants like Walmart, or the titans of industry who offshore jobs day in and day out, or the big banks that sold the exploding mortgages that crashed the economy and caused so much pain in the nation. Brothers and sisters, this is what we're seeing with fracking. The gas extra extraction giants, they want to drill now and ask questions later. They want to sell natural gas mostly overseas, and they do not care who gets hurt in the process. And the proponents of fracking have one major claim. It will create jobs, pumping that carbon out of the ground. But fracking destroys jobs too. New York is a beautiful state. We should even maybe say divine, given where we are. And much of upstate New York is dependent on tourism and agriculture. What will happen when the Finger Lakes is destroyed, the region, the groundwater is toxic? The jobs last a very short time. The chemicals last forever. For our part, every time we go to Albany with anything, minimum wage, domestic workers' bill of rights, Millionaire's Tax, Rent Regulation, Green Jobs Act. We hear the same thing. No, you can't do that. It's impossible. It's too many obstacles. Uh, the legislature won't listen. The governor's unconcerned. But in fact, we find a way. And we find a way the way that organizers, activists have always found, which is to make a plan and then to execute the plan. And that is what we at Working Families are so excited about. There is so much energy uh, across the state, uh, 61,000 or whatever the final number ends up being of comments is a, an amazing outpouring of energy and uh, the good kind of energy and we are excited to be part of that. There's an old saying that, that if you're in a hole the first thing you do is stop digging. We need to, we need to ban fracking, turn our attention to creating a, uh, an economy and an energy world, renewable energy world that will be good for everybody. On behalf of working families, I'm really grateful to be here. Thank you very much. Folks, how many of you have heard of Call Cuomo Mondays? Raise your hand. This was an idea originated by a friend of ours, David Braun, from United for Action, and adopted by Food and Water Watch and numerous other groups. It's pretty simple. We call Governor Cuomo each and every Monday and urge him to support a ban on fracking each and every Monday. And we get all of our friends and our families and neighbors to do so as well each and every Monday. We've heard from Cuomo's office that the calls are getting heard, literally. But we need to keep the drumbeat growing stronger and louder. So we've got thousands of flyers on the Cuomo Action Table promoting Call Cuomo Mondays. And we need your help. We need your help in distributing them. The flyers have a dedicated toll-free number that allows us to track the number of calls being made. So I have another question. Are you going to call Governor Cuomo on Monday? Are you going to call him every Monday? Yeah. Are you going to get your friends, family, and neighbors to call him every Monday? Yeah. I can't hear you. Yeah. Amen. And now I have another question. How many people here have seen a movie called Gasland? Let's give it up for Josh Fox! Good afternoon. Wow. So, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, a lot of times, like, uh, 
come place to speak, and someone comes running up to me with a piece of paper in their hand, they go, oh, Josh, will you please talk about this? And it happened today, and I was like, Mom, what are you doing? My mother is starting Mothers Against Fracking. And... Okay. She's, no, she, you better come on up here, Mom. She's, no, no, she's got, she lives in the neighborhood. Mom, come on up here, come on up here. Um, I'm putting her on the spot. I didn't tell her I was going to do this. Um, but do you want to tell people what you're doing? Well, okay. We're, we're launching a nationwide, worldwide public health campaign as mothers to raise awareness about the health risks for our children now and for all future generations due to extreme forms of energy production, specifically fracking. This will be a worldwide campaign because fracking has touched every corner of this earth. Our campaign is not just against something for, is not just against something, it's for sustainable forms of energy. We hope to invite Michelle Obama to join this campaign. Because of her genuine concern for children and families, we will be bringing this issue to her attention through as many forms of mass media that we can use on Mother's Day 2012. Look for our website and our Facebook page. It's called Mothers for Sustainable Energy, Mothers for Sane Energy, and Mothers Against Fracking. And we hope that she is very aware of this on Mother's Day. Thanks, Mom. I think it's extremely important that New York State, that we recognize that in New York State you're in a position to lead the world. Like New York State has done in so many other ways and, and so many other times. But I do think it's extremely important to recognize what a ban on fracking actually is. At a moment when we have the State Department starting the Global Shale Gas Initiative, a government-to-government -government collaboration exploring shale gas in 30 countries around the world. I, I've been all around the world. I've been to Africa. I've been to South America. I've been to Asia. I've been to Europe. I've been in, I don't know how many states in the United States, hundreds of cities talking to people about fracking. And it's clear to me that this is a push to use shale gas as the next source of world energy. This issue goes so far beyond the borders of New York State, but, but we need New York State to be a leader in this fight. And what I mean by that is it occurs to me that we cannot succumb to short term thinking. It was short term thinking that had me arrested on the floor of Congress three weeks ago. <laughs> right? Get him out of here right now. Damn the consequences. I said, go ahead, make my day. We'll see what happens. But my point here is that we don't ban fracking unless we replace it. We don't ban fracking unless we create renewable energy and a sustainable energy economy. These people are extremely persistent. We thought we were ahead in the Delaware River Basin. There may be new challenges coming to the Delaware River Basin soon. We think we're ahead in New York. There is a constant drumbeat of come back in and come back in. And Governor Cuomo, as many of our hopes are pinned to him, he still won't be the governor forever. And that gas will be in the ground forever. And it will be sought after forever unless we decide to stop using their product and start building in New York State an economy that is not based on fossil fuels. It is so crucial that we build something new. That we sit here today in this cathedral that was built I don't know how long ago and we'll stay, stay here for how many centuries, hopefully. 
and say this is a commitment that goes far beyond this next election cycle. This is a commitment that goes far beyond this next legislative cycle and says we have to stop using fossil fuels. We have to as a state. And what that means is when you go back to your buildings, to your co-op boards or to your representatives, you say we don't want natural gas burners. We want renewable energy in our buildings. We don't want a natural gas power plant or a pipeline. We want to build offshore wind. We want to build community solar. We want electric cars in New York City. Now, you're sitting here thinking, this is going to take a while. This is going to take a while. And it's going to take a while. But we have to accelerate that. Because the truth is, when Bill McKibben comes out here and, 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 and talks to you either today or in the future, he'll tell you that burning all the global shale gas, even without all these issues of water contamination, without all these issues of leakage, without all these issues of the fundamental overthrow of our democratic process because of this gas drilling campaign, if we just burned all this shale gas and everybody loved it and it worked perfectly, we would be at 650 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere and raise the temperature of the earth by seven degrees. That's pretty much the end. So we can't ban fracking in New York State without banning fracking throughout the, for, throughout the nation and throughout the world. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you to realize that you're in an incredible political position right now to be able to ask for what you really want. You have the power, you have the strength, you're in the majority. Fracking is a dirty word. Everybody knows it and it's because of you. Ask for what will work. We have to ask New York State to develop a new way of doing business, a new way of creating energy, and give us all new energy, right? Because we're gonna need it for a long fight ahead. You have to lead the world. So it has to be ban fracking and create renewable energy. We have to turn that corner. And to that end, and this is the last thing I'm saying, I did this in Albany, we are starting NY Safe, New Yorkers for Sustainable Agriculture and Frack Free Energy. It's a network. It's a network of all the organizations across New York State. Sign up in this little black book here or get one of the emails for NY, from NY Safe and sign up your organization. It's very simple. We're against fracking. We're for sustainable energy. That's it. Wow, and it makes a, a nice symbol. I just realized that. All right, thank you for extra time. Thank you, Mom. I love you all. Bye. It's now my pleasure to introduce another staunch ally in the fight against fracking, Adrian Esposito, Executive Director of Citizens Campaign for the Environment. There is one thing that we have to give to Governor Cuomo, and that is as candidate Cuomo, he promised to bring New Yorkers together. He delivered on that promise. Not quite sure this is exactly what he had in mind, but together we are. And actually, today, it's actually pretty appropriate that we're having this rally at St. John the Divine because this battle is akin to David and Goliath battle. Guess which one we are? But in that battle, you kind of knew who Goliath was. He was this big, ugly, barbaric guy. He probably smelled. In our battle, corporations come disguised. They're not here to pillage the land, to take our resources and steal our money. No, no, no. You got it all wrong. They're here to help. They're here to help bring our economy back. They're here for jobs, for clean natural gas. Jumpstart the economy. And just to sprinkle about $1.34 million into legislative coffers for the state of New York. They're helping. But we are not fooled. 
Not even for an instant. We know who Goliath is. And we may not have their money, we may not have their influence, and we may not have their perceived power, but we are going to win, just like David did. Why are we going to win? I'm glad you asked. We're going to win because we know something they don't, and we have something they don't. We're going to win because we know that the value of New York doesn't lie two miles down in the earth. The value and the worth of New York lies in the hearts and souls of its citizenry. And that's you. You're here today not because you're going to get a big fat bonus check if we win. God knows that's not going to happen. You're here today not because you're going to walk around the halls of Albany and beat your chest as the victor when we win. You're here today because you care. You're here today because you love New York. You're here today because you want what's right and needed for our families. You're here today because you have a vision and a hope for New York in the future that can be even better than it is today. You're here today because you care and we get it. And I think that is the most powerful force on earth. That's why we're going to win. I want to thank you. You need to be thanked. This is a very important part. Someone once said, the most powerful tool in democracy is our voice, is our words. And they were right. And all of you have decided to become engaged and use your voice and your pen and your heart, which are the three things that can change and will change the outcome of this campaign and decide the future of this state. You deserve so much credit for being involved, being engaged, and caring. And you need to keep doing it because the truth is, if you weren't on the front lines, if we weren't together collaboratively and collectively engaged in this battle, there would be fracking wells already in New York. We are making a difference. We are starting to turn the Queen Mary. We are going to win it. Together, we're going to make a difference. And your voice matters. We all need, collectively, to give our Earth a voice. And that's what you are doing. Thank you. Keep doing it. Stay strong. We're going to win. Thank you. She got that right. We are going to win. We are going to win. It's now my tremendous pleasure to introduce a very special guest, the writer Terry Tempest Williams. Williams is an outspoken and eloquent advocate for justice, for democracy, and indeed for life. The author of numerous books, including Finding Beauty in a Broken World, she is also a columnist for the Progressive Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Tempest Williams. This is indeed the open space of democracy. And I have to tell you, it's very disorienting. Um, I come from Wyoming. And if Wyoming were a nation, it would be the fourth largest energy producing nation in the world. Our refrain is frack yes. And I do not hear our legislators talking in the way you hear these brave men and women, and it moves me deeply. What I can tell you, the weather report from Wyoming is that probably there are nurses in Gillette, Wyoming, what we call Razor City, that in a, a local hearing said, we cannot keep enough chemotherapy in our county to surface all of the people who are sick with cancer. What I can tell you of a weather report from Pavilion, Wyoming, when Scott Stringer says, can you imagine what it would be like if you could not drink your water? In a rural town, farmers, ranchers, 
of 160 people, about a third of this audience, can no longer drink their water. They cannot drink it, they cannot cook with it, they cannot bathe with it, they cannot farm with it. In August of 2010, the EPA said, done. And now, in sort of a sick twist of colonialism, in Canada, the very oil and gas company that does the fracking on 250 wells brings in their water every Monday morning. This is the first time that fracking for natural gas has been linked to groundwater pollution with sodium, benzene, and methane gas in our water systems. In 2010, the Wyoming State Oil and Gas Conservation Commission unanimously approved new rules of disclosure to companies that have to give public disclosure to the chemical recipes that they are using. So even while in Wyoming, where frack yes is the refrain, we are coming to our senses. But we need your leadership, and I am going back to my own home state of Utah and Wyoming, galvanized. There is an art to activism, and it's a beautiful thing that we can gather here in the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. And I honor Lisa Schubert and Frederica Foster, who have shown us what that looks like. Because this is not just a political issue, it's a spiritual issue. And I invite you to stand among the Council of Pronghorn before you leave. Stand in the center, stand outside, and stand next to the pronghorn that come from the state of Wyoming, who still embody this wild wisdom. And just in closing, Gregory Bateson tells us that the pathway of wrong thinking does not take into consider relationship, does not take into consideration relationships. Our communities are being infiltrated, contaminated, annihilated. These communities of both human and the wild. And when we hear one of our presidential candidates, Rick Santorum, say that the earth is not the objective, man is the objective, then I think we really have work to do to expose this thinking of conditioned mind and work toward thinking of a patterned mind. We need a qualitative shift of the imagination. And I would just like to close with this one paragraph. The eyes of the future are looking back at us, and they are praying for us to see beyond our own time. They are kneeling with hands clasped that we might act with restraint, that we might leave room for the life that is destined to come. To protect what is wild is to protect what is gentle. Wild mercy is in our hands. One measure of the growing power of our movement is the tremendous number of organizations and individuals that were involved in supporting and promoting this rally. Please join me in recognizing all 42 of them as I read their names. Brooks Forum, Broadway Democrats, Brooklyn Food Coalition, Catskill Citizens for Safe Energy, Catskill Mountain Keeper, Chefs for the Marsalis, Citizen Action of New York, Citizens' Campaign for the Environment, Center for Health and Environment and Justice, Community Democrats, Councilwoman Gail Brewer, Croton Watershed Clean Water Coalition, Democracy for America, Democracy for New York, Food and Water Watch, Food Sustainability Club at Brooklyn College, Fourth Street Co-op, Frack Action, Grassroots Environmental Education, Green Party of New York, Infraction, Light Alliance Foundation, New York Interfaith Power and Light, New Yorkers for Clean Water, New York Rizzers Against Gas Drilling, No for New York, NY Contra El Gasoducto, New York City Friends of Clearwater, NYH2O, Occupy Wall Street Environmental Solidarity Working Group, Park Slope Food Co-op, Reach Out America, Sane Energy Project, Sierra Club Atlantic Chapter, Slow Food New York City, State Center Adrian Espiat, Sustainability Club at the Borough of Manhattan Community College, 350.org, Three Parks Independent Democrats, United for Action, Water Defense, and Work Working Families Party. Let's give it up for all these organizations. <laughs> Woo! Fracking in New York would be devastating 
to the safety of our food and the sustainability of our large and growing agriculture sector. The chefs for the Marsalis have been amongst the most eloquent and powerful advocates for defending our food from fracking. Hillary Baum from Chefs for the Marsalis. I'm very honored to be in this incredibly renowned sa sanctuary with its very rich history of leadership on ecological issues. And I'm also extremely excited that we're all in the midst of the very powerful exhibit is here that I guess Terry referred to, and that is the value of water. And this is the perfect moment for our group to be here and be deliberating over water. But in fact, my heart is very heavy, and when I was preparing for the, this event, I found myself in a very sorrowful place for the human and the corporate degradation of our environment. How can we face our children and our children's children and their children without fighting with everything that we have right now to stop the poisoning of our watersheds and our food sheds? After years of advocacy for sustainable food systems, I am here today as a founder of Chefs for the Marcellus, a campaign of chefs, restaurateurs, purveyors, and producers who have organized specifically to support and protect New York City's regional food system from fracking. We believe in a vibrant, expanding regional food and farm economy, and we will work for it, and we will fight for it. <laughs> Fracking poses an unacceptable threat to New York's agricultural heartland, to our fruit, vegetable, grain, dairy, and livestock farmers, our vintners, our brewers, our artisan food producers, their families, and their communities. Healthy farms need abundant supplies of clean water, clean air, and clean soil. Not fragmented by drilling pads, lines, and compressors. They need a critical mass of acreage and farming nearby and the infrastructure that will accompany it. And they need to be free of the stigma and the threatened boycotts that may be attributed to food sourced from areas where fracking may take place. Friend Ken Jaffe, who raises beef cattle in Delaware County, put it succinctly, the industrialization and pollution of rural upstate New York will kill the production of sustainable and organic food in this region. Fracking is a threat to the gains that have been made throughout the last 35 years in building rural and urban business and cultural relationships around food and farming, relationships that many of our urban and rural communities thrive on. Some say that agriculture in our region is dead and New York farmers have no economic choice but to lease their land to the gas companies. It's true that the economics of the conventional corporate food system may have forced many farmers off the land, but a growing number of others have adapted to the demand for fresh local food, and they are making a living, producing the food and beverage, beverages that millions of us want right now. That demand has skyrocketed in communities around the state, where close to 500 farmers markets and CSAs now offer New York products directly to their consumers of all incomes, many of whom use their SNAP and WIC and other benefits to bring farm fresh whole foods to their families. Co-ops, specialty food stores, and supermarkets purchase millions of dollars worth of New York produce, meats, and dairy. And resorts, schools, restaurants, and bars boast of their local seasonal items and cherish relationships with their producers. We need them all to join our fight, and we're going to get them. New York, New York agriculture is not dead, but fracking can drive a stake into its heart destroy livelihoods and permanently damage the landscape that we love, our physical and spiritual sustenance. Around the world, farmland faces a host of challenges. New York is no different. And right now, fracking is our greatest threat, but it's also our greatest opportunity. We can be a beacon of hope as the place where urban and rural communities have joined forces to ban fracking. Let New York be the state where the absence of fracking adds value to living and working here. Thank you, Hillary. Okay, I got another question.
Who's got a cell phone? If you have one, please take it out. Now, cell phones are on the cutting edge of digital activism, or so I've been told by my colleagues at Food and Water Watch who really know about this stuff. They are an extraordinarily useful tool, more so than laptops, websites, and email, for easily mobilizing lots of people to take urgent action. And urgent action is something we will need to do a lot more of in the months ahead. So I'm going to ask you to do something right now. If you've got a cell phone, take your cell phone out and text FRAC, that's F-R-A-C-K, to the number 69866. I'll repeat it. That's FRAC. F-R-A-C-K to the number 69866. This will sign you up to receive very occasional text message alerts from Food and Water Watch. Last year, through our text messaging program, we were able to generate nearly 20,000 phone calls. On our next call-in day, we want to use this tool to call Cuomo. But we need to build our list of supporters like you who help us mobilize to win the fight against fracking. So one more time, folks, that's frack. Please text F-R-A-C-K to 69866. Again, that's F-R-A-C-K to number 69866. All right. It's now my pleasure to introduce my good friend, David Braun, Executive Director of United for Action. The previous message was provided to you by the folks at Food and Water Watch. So, you guys are rock. Food and Water Watch rocks. Look what they've done here today. They put something together that's very extraordinary. I've got some friends that I wanted to come up. Hey guys, come on up, come on, bring that, bring that up too. Let's, anybody else want, if you want to bring that thing's absolutely amazing. If you want to come up here with that. And we got a group of kids here. Um, so really what this is, is this is a reflection of you. Okay? First, for those of you that are atheist or agnostic, bear with me. But God bless you guys. Um, we've got a fight on our hands here, uh, and it is one of a spiritual nature, and this is one that we're going to win. If this society, this human race, this beautiful experiment is going to survive, it is our intention, our every intention to make sure that it does. Me and these amazing people that I'm standing here with today and these amazing people that are before me. Now, I, I want to just take a quick moment and get everybody up on your feet. Can you guys stand up for me, please? Do you guys feel the power that's in this room? Now, basically what's going on here is that this build-out, there are there's no more oil for these companies to drill. So it's not no coincidence that the companies that want to come in and do drilling are Exxon, Chevron, BP, ConocoPhillips, and Shell. And they no longer have oil to drill. So this is their new product line. And this is how they're going to extend their life for the next 20 to 30 years. Because the bottom line is they know they're obsolete when we start plugging in our electric vehicles into our solar panels, that we don't need them anymore. And I'll tell you, that's going to be a good day because we're not going to, we're going to see the rates of cancer lessen. We're going to see people living longer lives. We're not going to see 3,000 people dying each year because of air pollution in New York City. We won't see these health impacts and we'll be free from corporations deciding our energy policy, which is what they're currently doing. We've known and we've seen enough to know that fracking is a terrible, awful thing. A wholesale destruction of a substantial portion of the Earth's crust, getting a relatively small amount of energy out of the Earth, is not our energy future. There are quite literally hundreds of reasons not to frack. 
Uh, and and what we're doing, we're a part of a, a video uh, event that no frack, uh, New Yorkers Against Fracking are doing. Uh, the folks at Water Defense and Frack Action have a table back here on the left. So they're doing this amazing video project. So before you leave here today, you're welcome to stop by the table and see them and tell Governor Cuomo one of your hundreds of reasons not to do hydraulic fracturing. It's important that we get those out there because Lord knows there are plenty of reasons not to be doing this and poisoning our brothers and sisters is one of them. If you aren't on the United Fraction list, uh, we're working with a group called uh, Renew New York and the, um, we're doing this, we're supporting the, the basically the different options, the different ways that we can replace this fracked shale gas coming into our communities. So if you want to help us think about these solutions and work towards implementing them in our communities, sign up on our email list and get on the Renew New York emailing list as well so you can find out what these solutions are so we together because this is a together movement, right? That's what all my friends are doing here, together. So we together can bring this world into a better place. And that's what we're gonna do. It's now my pleasure to introduce someone who has genuinely helped sustain and nurture this movement. I don't know where we'd be without Julia Walsh, campaign director for Frack Action. Across the state, I've met over the past two years in organizing our campaign and our team, people that are deeply dedicated to what we love. This love is not just a sympathetic or sentimental love. This love is a fierce love that drives our movement. It drives everyone here and everyone across the state that works on this once a week, twice a week, every day, in their sleep, to maintain and protect our water, our air, our mountains, our children, our grandchildren, our families, our friends, our communities. That's what drives our movement, and that is why we are going to win. The gas industry can come here with their millions of dollars trying to buy off our politicians, spread their propaganda and lies. But it's our love of this land, it's our love of New York that will save this state and make us an example for the rest of this country and the rest of the world as we pioneer the renewable energy future that we know is possible. Our work is only as important as your work. There's a saying that the Hopi elders released to the public many years ago. We are the ones we've been waiting for. It is each and every one of us. And it's by coming here today and renewing our commitment to this movement in this moment where we are in a crisis state, where our president has stood up on a podium just like this and said that shale gas is America's future at a time when our governor, ever since Obama's statements, has now said that we're moving forward and going through these comments as quickly as possible. In the next few months, I'll have my decision. Well, we've got a message for Governor Cuomo. In the next few months, he is gonna hear from us. He is gonna feel us. He is gonna know our faces and know our movement so strongly that his decision will be clear. His decision will be to stand with us, to stand with New York, to stand with our children, to stand with our communities, to stand up and to ban fracking now. So in closing, I just hope that all of us can take one quick moment to breathe in the beauty of this place, the sacredness of this space, the beauty in our lives, all that we love, the faces of our children, our grandchildren, our family and friends. That is why we're here today. 
And that is why we will win. Thank you. <laughs> that was great. Wow. Well, on the subject of digital technology, uh, Bill McKibben, the noted author and founder of 3D.org, very much wanted to be here today in Vermont. So he recorded these remarks for us. Hello, everybody. I wish very much I could be there with you at the Cathedral of St. John, one of the prettiest places in the world. Uh, to join in this really important conference. I think it's the right place to be, because if you um, walk a couple of blocks west out those grand doors, of course you're at the banks of the Hudson, and if you go up the Hudson, you come into the heart of the empire state, of this endland empire, of the most watery place almost, and the lower 48 from Lake Tira the Clouds to Lake Erie to Lake Ontario, from Cataraugus Creek to the Batten Kill, from the Erie Canal to the locks around Lake Champlain uh, to Lake George, most beautiful lake, queen of lakes. Um, all New York is watery, and that's one of the reasons why we can't let it get fracked, because because we can't take what's our most precious resource and uh, give it up to the um, fossil fuel industry so they can make a quick buck. Um, we can't do that for all kinds of reasons, including, crucially, the fact that we will never get a hold of our climate problems if we don't stop burning fossil fuel gas included. We used to think maybe this was a bridge fuel to some kind of future. Now we understand, looking at the numbers, watching what happens with escaping methane, that it's not a bridge, it's just a rickety pier built further out into that huge lake of fossil fuel. So uh, we at 350 will work very hard with you in this fight against fracking. It may take some of the kind of measures that we had to employ in this fight around the Keystone Pipeline. Maybe other people, some of us will have to go to jail or, or, or whatever. Um, but we need very much to keep New York free of these drill rigs, and we need very much to keep the atmosphere free of that CO2 and that CH4. You guys are doing incredibly important work. Thank you for it. Thank you, Bill McKibben, a tremendous leader. Uh, it's now my honor to introduce Wes Gillingham. Speaking of leaders, Wes Gillingham from Catskill Mountain Keeper. This is such an incredible place to do something like this, and it's really amazing to me to see how many people came out for this and to have it take place here. Uh, the churches where I live are more like the size, a little bit bigger than this platform. They're not quite like this. And I was out with some friends last night, and we, had, we started joking Oh, it's in this cathedral. If only I could like write a Gregorian chant about no fracking, when else would you have an opportunity to sing something like that in a cathedral? And I knew there was going to be a whole ton of speakers here that were going to say all the right things and get everybody riled up. I usually you know, try to do that, start talking logic and sense, and then get people screaming at the end. And then I just thought about accepted business practice and how crazy that one is to all the people in this room, the accepted business practice of chemicals in the ground, radon in the gas when you cook your eggs, the, just the whole gamut of what's going on. And I thought about how slavery was an accepted business practice. And there are people that changed that. So it's not a business practice anymore. Chant about an hour ago or two hours ago now, I guess. I thought, when else would I have the opportunity to sing Amazing Grace in a cathedral? Some of us don't go to church all the time, so this is my opportunity to sing in church in front of 500 people. 
I wasn't in the choir when I was a little kid because I didn't, couldn't stay in key, and I might not do it now, but there's 500 other people that can stay in key, maybe. And Amazing Grace, I thought of that because it was written by a slave trader who had a revelation and changed his mind and turned the ship around midstream. And then I thought of some another activist and so a group of us that were up there uh, working on the moratorium bill. And everybody in the restaurant thought we were crazy because one of us said, hey, I know this Buddhist chant. It's a call to action. It'll make things happen. Maybe that'll get the moratorium passed in an hour. We were during a recess of the Senate. So we, everybody in the church went, was like, what is going on over there? But we all sat and we did this chant in the church. So again, and, and we got the moratorium bill passed. So it worked. So people come to churches and places like this and they, they have prayer and they sing because they believe it will make change. So let's see if we can turn that ship around midstream. Andrew Cuomo, you can turn the ship around and send it back and free us from this slavery we're all fighting. So here goes. And I want everybody to sing with me because I was serious. I'm not a singer. Amazing grace, how sweet. majestic space, our voices will not just echo in these halls, but up to Albany and across the world. As several other people have already said, people across the world are looking to us in New York State, looking to see if we will allow our elected leaders to persist in their belief that what happened everywhere else somehow, miraculously, will not happen here. Will we have the hubris to think we can address this Pandora's box of devastating impacts. We're only just starting to understand this issue of the radon that's actually in the gas itself. So even if you could frack safely somehow, what would happen if millions of people in New York City turn on their kitchen stoves and get a dose of radon in these poorly ventilated city kitchens? And actually, I've been asked to, the, I think the Sane Energy Project and Frack Busters people have a kit over there. Where, can someone raise their hand? Over back there, a kit if you want to do baseline radon testing to establish the level of radon that's in your home now. Uh, just another reason that we're starting to learn that fracking is unsafe. And of course, we, we often talk a lot about safety with this issue, uh, which naturally leads to questions of numbers and percentages and ratios and questions of risk versus reward. I think we actually need to start talking about accountability. It's not acceptable for one family to have to deal with water contamination as a result of fracking. And if this, if this industry is so safe, why won't it clean up its messes? You know, yesterday I talked to Craig Stevens in Montrose, Pennsylvania, who's been working very hard to coordinate water deliveries to the families of Carter Road that have been dealing with this contamination for three years. And a rare, the, the rare case that they have actually been, refu they have refused to be kept silent by this industry that has waged a multi-million dollar war to try to silence them and keep them from telling their stories. We've been keeping their water deliveries going with, with donations from the grassroots. And now the industry is actually trying to shut them down from having access to a water well to do the grassroots water deliveries and also trying to prevent them from recording a public meeting. So if this is the exception to the rule, as we're supposed to believe, if Cabot is just a bad apple, why don't we see the Marcella Shale Coalition rushing to join us in our demand for justice for the people in Dimmick? Why don't we see ExxonMobil 
decide not to air their commercials one time and supply water to the families of Carter Road for a year. We know the truth. This industry could not operate profitably if they fairly compensated the victims, as if you could ever even make up for that kind of devastation. We know this industry cannot operate without breaking the law, without waging a war on science and the truth, and silencing the people whose lives they destroy. Not one family should have to go through what the families of Carter Road have gone through. And we will not let one family in New York have to go through that. And we will also not be silent when President Obama joins T. Boone Pickens in selling us the tall tale that natural gas is a clean, green miracle fuel. As Bill McKibben just said, natural gas is only a bridge to an inhospitable, uninhabitable planet. And I think it's worth mentioning that it would cost us $700 billion to make that so-called easy transition to natural gas. What can we do with that money for renewables? We know that it's high time to demand what's necessary, that we invest our money as taxpayers and as consumers to create a truly renewable, sustainable economy. And we know that the energy solutions are here now. We could get to 100% renewable energy by 2030 if we only had the political will. And we're going to start right here in New York by banning fracking. Okay, folks, we're nearing the end of the speaker's portion of the program, but the most important part of the event comes next. That's when you have the opportunity to visit the action tables and sign up to get active, stay engaged, and take the steps necessary to build the movement. We've got the Cuomo action table, where you can sign up to help gather petitions and get the Call Cuomo Monday flyers you've heard so much about. The Legislative Action Table, where you can sign up to join a team that's organizing in key districts and get the Call Your Legislator flyers. You can join the, the, the Gasland Screening Table, staffed by our friends at United for Action, where you can sign up to help organize a screening of Gasland in your community. And then there's the exciting opportunity with our partners at Water Defense to be filmed for a video against fracking. And last but not least, a table with information about fracking and food and water watch, including how you can become a member and supporter of our organization. And speaking of supporters, Food and Water Watch has no greater friend, and I mean that, than Catherine Skopik, chair of both the Congregation of St. Savior and the Diocesan Environmental Committees and representative to the Commission on Sustainable Development of the United Nations. Thank you. Catherine. Water is life. Unpolluted agricultural land is life. Clean air is life. These three are threatened with permanent destruction by fracking. And we don't need the shale gas. Efficiency and renewables could solve the problem. It has been estimated up to 90 to 95 percent by 2030 if all sectors got behind this effort. We're here in this magnificent cathedral, home for people of all religions or none. I stand before you as mother, citizen, and Christian with moral responsibility to care for God's creation. For people of all religions or none, water is life. And as I look out into the audience and see your wonderful faces, I see you. You are the significant part of we. We who have stood together and worked. We've stood together in the cold, the rain, and the sun, in rallies in New York City. We who have traveled in buses, vans, and cars to countless rallies in Albany, in Philadelphia, in Trenton, in Washington, D.C. We, who have made the hundreds of calls to Governor Cuomo to ban fracking. 
We who have written the thousands of letters to the DEC. We who have formed one of the newest groups, Renew New York, who work to plan educational panels on renewable energy. We had one on solar, we had another on wind and water turbines, and we have one on March 22nd coming up on uh, boiler conversions. We who have given our testimony at hearings, pouring out our hearts, our minds, and our souls to save life, to save our people's health, to save our water, land, and air. We who have twice seen the DRBC postpone their vote. And we applaud State Supreme Court Justice Philip Rumsey for upholding Dryden zoning laws. The zoning laws that prohibit gas drilling within town limits. The state regulates drilling, but localities control the zoning. And while there are state laws that can override zoning, these concerning, they are not included, the, the zoning laws that include mining and drilling are not among them. Rumsey also upheld the power of local authorities to make decisions about their local roads. So this also further protects people from fracking. So we applaud State Supreme Court Justice Philip Rumsey. And we hope and pray that these decisions continue to be upheld. Climate scientists around the globe have been studying this. They have not only seen the smoke, they've seen the fire. And you are so important because you are responding and by banning fracking, we are also saving life on this very planet. The struggle is not over. So we will continue to stand together in the cold, the rain, and the sun. Again and again. Until we ban fracking. Thank you. And finally, Food and Water Watch's own executive director, Winona Howder! Whose water? Our water! Gandhi said, a small body of determined spirits fired by an unquenchable faith in their mission can change the course of history. You are changing the course of history. Together, we are changing the course of history. We are collectively creating the political space that is necessary to stop fracking. Our movement has the vision, the energy, and the conviction to fight for what is right, not just the best that we can get. Our movement is gaining momentum. Let's celebrate all of the victories that we've had over the last 12 months. Delaying the DRBC hearing against all odds. 60,000 comments to the DEC, more than we've ever seen before. Our movement has passed 81 resolutions against banning in New York State. Our movement is national. Around the country, communities have passed 150 resolutions against fracking. Activists and, and their allies are working in more than a dozen states to stop fracking. Our movement is global. Activists are fighting fracking on every single continent. While we are growing stronger every day, we are not yet strong enough. The greedy economic interests who put profit before people are strategizing on new ways to crush us. 
in May of this year, the first Global Water, Oil and Gas Summit is taking place in Dubai. The World Water Council, an, interna an intergovernmental organization that partners with the UN, is involved in this meeting. These big corporations, Exxon, Shell, GE, the biggest corporations in the world, are getting together to figure out not only how to drill for every last drop of oil and gas, but how to make money after they pollute our water. We know they don't have the technology and our governments don't have the money to clean up the water that could never be in a pristine state again. We are going to build the political power to stop this industry. We know that we can't just sit here in Albany, in Washington, D.C., and negotiate our way out of this mess. We have to organize, organize, organize to build the political power to make Governor Como say no to natural gas and yes to renewables. We have to make President Obama do the right thing. There are no shortcuts to justice. We have to have a wide, broad, grassroots movement. We must empower large numbers of people to fight for democracy, to fight to save New York's water, to stop this industry, to save our planet. We have to ban fracking in New York State. We have to force Governor Como to be the hero he wants to be. We have to force him to embrace renewable energy and to put a stop to the fracking nightmare. We have to work harder. We have to work longer. We have to work faster, smarter, and in a more coordinated fashion. They will say that we are divisive. They will say that we are unrealistic. They will call us names, but we do not care. We have a long history in this country of fighting and winning for social justice, and we will do this again. We will do this again. We need all of our political leaders and our allies to embrace what Gandhi said about compromise. He said, all compromise is based on give and take, but there can be no give and take on fundamentals. Any compromise on fundamentals is surrender. Our water is a fundamental. We will not surrender to the frackers.